Day 11. Time. Approximately 22.30. Location. Low orbit. 1,800 kilometers above Equestria. High above the planet floated Ponymedes I, a gigantic of plastic and super light alloys with a body shaped like a large sunflower with large solar panels that formed its petals. There were words and signs painted across the satellite that warned against a multitude of dangers such as fire or falling rocks. The only one that held some meaning for an observer was the Solaris logo. With its male alicorn and the motto, Try the alternative, encircled the image. Attached to the satellite's large round body, there were four barrels, easily larger than a couple of train cars. The weapons were composed of two linear metal rails held together by many rings, placed only a few centimeters apart from each other. That was a railgun, or a Gauss gun, or maybe both merged together. Go figure. Anyway, it's a weapon that uses a sequence of strong magnetic pulses and a potential energetic thrust to propel a metallic body at unpony speed against very distant targets. In other words, it's a deadly weapon, and Ponymedes I was armed with four of these little toys. But at Solaris, no pony left a work half-baked. How could a single satellite be ready for action? They needed a network of satellites, a complete shield ready to defend Equestria and whomever made a better offer for that little jewel. So Ponymedes had eleven siblings. Able to change their distance from the planet and move around in orbit to operate in groups. Now the whole family had been reunited, and each of the twelve brothers had their guidance lasers pointing at their own designated target. Eight. Seven. Six. As one of the four barrels began to discharge sparks of blue electricity from between each ring, and all along the metal rings as the countdown steadily ticked away, a metallic bar coated with ceramics more or less one and a half meters long and shaped like a pointy stick, was placed into the barrel by an automated loading system and immediately enveloped by a blue halo. Five, four, three. Behind the satellite, four hatches opened to reveal exhaust vents for the recoil compensation system. A dim red light appeared outside each of them, glowing like lava within the belly of a volcano. All four barrels were now completely blue. Powered by the electricity running from ring to ring, they seemed like bright lances, ready to unleash their fury against a doomed opponent. Two. One. Firing for effect. Day 11. Time approximately 22.30. Location. Ivory Tower. Big 52, S.C. Branch. Attack commencing. Estimated time of arrival for first salvo, 7 minutes. Half of the guidance lasers disappeared, and a couple shifted kilometers away in the blink of an eye, as if something up in the heavens had gone awfully wrong. Still, five red lights continued to shine down on the building's roof, flickering once or twice but staying on target. Why is every pony running now? Henrietta opened her wings, ready to grab Puppy and fly away with the foal. The filly in yellow pointed at the besieged building entrance. Those two aren't running away. We can ask them. And with these words, she tried to trot towards the two perplexed paladins defending the main research building. I don't think so. My job here is done, and we're following example with our fleeing friends. To all the ponies inside the building, you are being attacked from the sky. Evacuate the fort. We call for the truce. Run for your lives. Once again, Scold's voice thundered above the battlefield before he turned on his tail and ran, following the acolytes and the other scribes. Finally, Henry looked up at the clouds, and her beak hung up in as she saw the red lasers cutting through the darkness of the night. 
Ah, rotten eggs. If those were what it uses to aim, I don't want to see what it fires. Warning. Lost signal from Ponymedes 3, 5, 10, 11, and 12. Ponymedes 4 and 7 report major failures with the recoil compensation systems. Ponymedes 1, 2, 4, uh, 6, 7, and 9 are compensating the second barrage in 10, 9. Puppy frowned. Mr. Voice had been talking for a while now. It didn't seem like he was going to stop anytime soon. Everything was becoming really confusing. Why was every pony running away? Why did Mr. Red Cape yell so loud when? And why was her helmet showing all these blinking red lights everywhere? How do I make this mess all stop? I don't know. I don't care. Let's get out of here. Henry took flight, grabbing Puppy and gaining height and speed with each stroke of her eagle wings. Okay, new problem. Flying. Puppy had thought up a plan for the next time she had to fly. Something she really had to do. What was that already? All right. Scream. Ah! No, 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 no! Shut your trap! I'm trying to save your life! After her running start, the griffin began to lose speed and altitude, dragged down by the filly's weight. What the fuck are you carrying around now? I made you throw away a ton of junk and you're already full of useless stuff again? Ah, unload the bags or we're gonna crash. One. Two. Second salvo out. Readying guns for third salvo. Let me go! Let me go! Puppy was struggling. In the middle of her personal world of things moving too fast and too far from her hooves to be comfortable with, Henrietta tried cutting one of the wiggling filly saddlebags with a talon, slashing desperately from the bottom of the container and missing it several times before finally managing to hit and removing target. Gotcha. Repair spell activated. Lost signal from Podimedes 1 and 2. Podimedes 4, 7, and 9 will be ready to fire in 10. Nine. The hole in the bag closed almost immediately, while the inventory management spell kept everything in place. Hey, that's cheating. You want to play rough? I'm in. The griffin let go of Puppy from one side, turning her upside down. This strategy worked a little better because one of the bags wasn't closed. The filly rapidly lost weight as she left behind a trail of odds and ends in the sky. Empty bottles, roasted plushies and a small toy cart. No, no, no! I'm gonna pee myself! Please stop! Stop, please! Puppy was completely terrorized by the situation of being dangled in the sky, and it only made things worse. The fool succeeded in grabbing the Rock of Destiny as it fell from her bag, although a lot of other cool stuff she had found was lost forever. Everything was going bad today, and she didn't even have time to complain. Since stupid chicken Henry was teasing her hard. You bully! Let me go, I'm telling Mom! When Puppy had finally reached a bearable weight, Henry lifted the filly onto her back, hoping that would lessen her screams. All right, all right. We're done. Now be quiet and I'll put you down when we're past that hill. Henry had no idea what was going to rain down from the sky, but her life as a mercenary had taught her the value of cover. Actually, she wondered why nothing had happened yet. But she suspected that the longer whatever it took to arrive was, the worse it was going to be. We can't land here, puppy. Try not to think about it. Listen to some music and close your eyes. Puppy was barely listening, but the music idea suddenly seemed like the best ever. Music! Now, please! The radio came to life while on the ground ponies ran as fast as they could, Though the Applejack's rangers and the Steel Rangers, who had decided to believe the old scribe, were now running for the hills. Hello, fillies and gentle colts. Isn't it well past your bedtime? This is Lonesome Pony, and you're listening to Radio 52. The only radio that brings you the news and safety from the ridges of the Emerald Shores. Tonight, we have a lot of things to talk about. So let's get down to business. No music. Why was it every time Puppy turned on the radio, the first thing she heard was the stupid chatty pony? Puppy wanted to listen to some music. The ground was rushing, blur below, 
and Mr. Voice wouldn't stop chatting, and now even Lonesome Pony was giving her a lecture instead of some music, Puppy wanted to cry. In the background, the suit informed the filly that the surviving three satellites were continuing their attack. First things first. Things are getting messy along the south branch. It seems that the wild herd is ambushing the patrols from Ironworks again. But this time, they seem to be better equipped and way more organized than in the past. Maybe they found a new leader? This could mean big, big trouble in our near future. Don't lower your guard if you are traveling south of Rockley or from the Memorial to Ironworks, and try to avoid the eastern route to Emerald Shores. Stay on the road and turn your tails as soon as you sight something suspect. Better safe than sorry. The griffin soared through the air, easily surpassing the ponies that led the retreat. They were slow, too slow to get to a safe distance in time, but there was a good chance that even she and Puppy were condemned, so... Why not try running away? With a stroke of her wings, Henry gained speed and kept flying straight despite the cocking, uh, choking grip of Puppy around her neck. Now, since bad news never trots alone, we have a new change of policy from the NCA. Rejoice! The NCA forces have decided that every traitor is actually a raider. So they're starting arresting traders and confiscating their merchandise on their borders. Yay. If you were planning a trip there, you better reconsider. And try heading for Salt Cube City, or Tunnel Town for trading your goods, since the northern branch is now safe. Henrietta landed behind the hill, panting heavily. Puppy jumped down from her back as soon as she could see solid ground, and immediately stuck her tongue out at the big meanie chicken. Blah! Why do you always have to bully me? I'm your friend. Back off, puppy. Replying with almost no breath in her lungs was quite hard for puppy, or Henry, but the filly couldn't have anything in her way every time. I'm not bullying you. Something's going to happen in that place. Something bad. And now the last news. It seems an old merchant came back from his longest trial. He started four years ago with a cart full of garbage and a brahmin, and he's back with... Well, a brahmin and a cart full of garbage. And a lot of stories. Maybe over the next day I'll tell you all about the places he visited. But it seems like those ponies in the far west are crazy. He told me about a city of lights and great walls crossing a river, imprisoning it to produce energy. Whoa. We could use something like that, couldn't we? And this ends the news. Have some good music, my little ponies. Puppy cocked her head in surprise. Something bad? But Mom's there! The foal turned towards Ivory Tower, now more than a couple kilometers away, illuminated by the dim red light of a single surviving laser beam. The clouds above the old research facility flashed with white light for a moment, at which point the radio decided to start playing music. Blazing lines of white burst through the clouds, like tiny silver darts shining in pure heat. They rained down from the heavens into Tivory T Ivory Tower. The magnetically accelerated shots crossed the cloudy sky in a split second, striking the buildings and the area nearby with such force that for a moment Henry could have sworn she felt the earth shudder beneath her feet. First arrived the flash, a white halo rising from the impacted structure. Then, the wall seemed to expand for a moment, reminding Puppy of a balloon being inflated. For a short instant, everything seemed to hang in the air, as if time had stopped, leaving the building floating there, separated from its many elements. Walls, windows, doors. Like in one of those drawings that showed all the parts of a cart or a house that Mom had showed her one time. That instant of stillness only lasted in the blink of an eye, then everything flew away in different directions. Chunks of wall as large as trucks went flying through the sky like shreds of paper, surpassing even the moat and landing on the bridge and shacks beyond, making them crumble like a cardboard castle. Then came the sound. The first thing Puppy heard was an acute whistle, like when you try making that weird music with grass leaves. But it didn't last too long, because immediately after arrived the boom. Not just one big boom, 
with the sound of many thuds, followed by the booming thing. It was like a rapid-fire concert. A thud, then a boom. A thud, then a boom. A thud, thud, and a boom, boom. Wow, catchy. Puppy really wished that Mom could have been here to see the show. It was so fun. Wait, no. Mom was there. Actually, Mom was supposed to be inside that super nice white building. Oh. The filly's eyes widened as she lifted a hoof towards what was once the ivory tower, her expression becoming a mask of fear. Mom? Warning. Pony Medes is out of ammunition. Signal lost from all other satellites. Attack aborted. Area will be safe for incoming fire in 15 minutes. Thank you for choosing Solaris, Inc. as your main siege weapon system. Solaris, try the alternative. Puppy stared unblinkingly at the white points of light as they continued to pierce the clouds and rain down like tiny stars on what was once her mission objective. Why didn't they stop? Wasn't that enough? They already made a lot of noise and stuff. Now it was time to stop, right? It's fun only if it lasts a bit, and then it becomes scary. Puppy held her breath, praying that every silver shard falling from the sky was the last, but they never seemed to stop. There were always others coming. Destroying the place where Mr. Voice told her that Mom was. But wait, the arrow was still there. Yes, there was still hope. Puppy rejoiced. Nothing could stop Mom. Take that, stupid silver rain. Another hail of falling stars fell from the cloud of smoke and debris, this time hitting somewhere near the research center's power plant. It was easy to tell, because the thud was followed by a giant ball of green fire that exploded upwards toward the sky, producing a glowing mushroom cloud in the middle of the mayhem. Okay, that was new, and it was unfair. Warning. Mild radiation detected. Threat level negligible. The pink arrow on the compass blinked three times and then disappeared. Puppy waited for it to reappear, hoping for it to reappear, and begging for it to reappear. But the compass remained empty. The suit informed her that the mission chasing rain had been completed. Why were those silver things still falling even now? It was over. All over. The arrow was gone. Mom was gone. Mom was gone? No, that can't be. Mom was... Mom was where the arrow said, but now... Now the arrow didn't say anything. Puppy followed that arrow only because it pointed at Mom, and now there was nothing to follow. There was nothing left. Just... Just a bunch of falling stars, and... And for the first time since the fool left Canterlot, she didn't know what to do. Mom was gone. Puppy's right eye twitched, and the fool stood still. Eyes wide and staring her muzzle petrified in an expression of surprise. Henrietta put a paw on the pony's shoulder, trying to say something in the deafening thunder of the bombardment. Whoever began that attack wanted to be the double sure that nothing was left of the whole place, even down their generator's explosion, whose white missiles kept arriving. Those guys had ammo to waste. Don't worry. Your mom wasn't there. I was inside the place. She wasn't in Ivory Tower. Puppy didn't react. The foal probably didn't even hear her words. So Henry tried shaking her, but the pony didn't offer any resistance, simply moving like a rag doll, her blonde head bobbing inside the helmet. Come on, puppy. You've been through things worse than this. Hey, I'm talking to ya. Henrietta poked the filly again, making her head bob a little more. What the fuck? Hey, wake up. Still no reaction. We have to get away from here. The last explosion spread radiation everywhere. The young mercenary sighed in frustration. Why me? I just accepted a simple job. Why is it every time I fucking try to do something it goes fucking south? No, wait. I don't want to know. Henry put Puppy on her back and started walking away, trying to catch up with the rangers. Whatever. Those fanatics still owe me half my pay. Let's go, puppy. The griffin slowly walked, feeling something was missing. I can't stand you like this. Will ya say something, please? Still nothing. 
Okay, you want it the hard way? Here we go. Henrietta waved Puppy's hoof around in the air and tried to imitate her friend's usual enthusiastic voice. Yeah, let's go, pretty bulky chicken. Right now, the attack had begun to slow down, with only a couple of lights raining down each minute. But even those few bolts were enough to make the ground tremble. Great. Now I'm talking with a giant puppet. This will sure help. Day 12. Time, approximately 4.30 a.m. Location, Steel Ranger Outpost, Big 52 SC Branch. A group of rangers, scribes, and acolytes were building an impromptu encampment next to a hillside. They were moving crates and military bags out from a reinforced blast door that was built into a natural mound. The little bunker had been used as a monitoring station during the war, and then as an observation post by the rangers for more than a century. It was built into a hill with a couple of raised scout platforms on the top. The whole complex was a little cramped and couldn't fit more than eight or nine ponies inside. But it was better than nothing and the rangers had kept some supplies and spare equipment inside in case of an emergency. Look, things didn't go exactly as planned. I can't spare another single cap right now. Cold Shower hadn't even bothered to take off her helmet before speaking with Henry. Griffin cocked her head, upset. But I did what you asked me to do. I disabled the generators and all their damned internal security systems. I don't care if the whole place got showered with fallen stars. I want my caps. You can always go back to the crater and take them for yourself. We won't complain that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a camp to organize. Decisions to take and prisoners to manage. The paladin began to trot away from the mercenary. Henrietta took Puppy's hoof, pointing at the paladin and spoke in a childish voice. You meanie pony, why are you cheating? Stop being a bad smart robo-whatever and play by the rules. Cold shower froze on the spot, turning her head towards the griffin, moving the foal like a rag doll. You are creepy as hell, you know that, right? Don't use your smarts with me, I'm not stupid. Now behave and pay my friend. With a poke to the helmet, Henry made Puppy's head turn a little in her direction. This made the paladin step back, shivering. Stop that. Listen, I'm sorry for your friend, but we have our own problems. Shower hesitated. She wasn't sure of what freaked her out more. Seeing the filly, once lively, now reduced to a veggie, or the young griffin using her as a money-begging puppet. Henry crossed Puppy's hooves and made her turn her head away. I don't want to be your friend anymore. Okay, okay, I give up. Listen, now we have to work out what to do with the rangers that decided to surrender. After that, I'll send you to Scribe Scold and he'll see what he can be done for Puppy Smiles. Uh, after that's done, we'll see if we can put together some payment for you. Don't expect very much. Puppet Smiles raised a hoof. Yay. And stop that puppet thing, it's creepy. The paladin trotted away without waiting for another reply from the griffin. Henry stood up for a moment, smiling, satisfied, then walked around the hill, and as soon as the camp was out of sight, she hugged the foal with all her strength. Don't worry. We'll fix everything. Just, just, don't go away, please. The griffin sat on the ground and kept talking, still hugging puppet smiles. I know I've been a bad friend, but I never meant to. It was all a joke. Have you the slightest idea how hard of life mercenary work is? No, you don't. You... You're just an immortal shade playing around and making everything seem easy, and... And I envied you. I also hated you because you weren't sad even though you were alone. I hated being alone. Scribe Scold came around the corner at that very moment, calling out for the griffin. Hey, Miss Firebright, Paladin Shower wants to talk with you in the bunker. The old unicorn stopped where he was, waiting for a reply. Henry yelped in surprise and tried desperately to hide the yellow pony behind her back. Call, call next time.
Yeah, sure, nodded the scribe. The griffin's expression was one of panic and concern. Did you see anything? No, girl, I didn't see you were hugging your friend and crying. Henry seemed to relax. Good. The half-lion trotted towards Scold and poked him in the shoulder. Keep an eye on the dead weight while I'm there. She paused for a moment, looking straight in the old scribe's eyes. She lost the battle almost immediately. Please? No problem. I was actually looking for her on my own. Take your time. Scold waited for Henrietta to nod and walk away. Then she trot towards Puppy Smiles. It was sitting and staring off into the distance, still lost in some Celestia knows what place in her head. So, here we are again, you and I. I have a suspicion and I need to duck in your bags. Care if I do? No? Thanks. The scribe didn't smile. He simply opened the suit's bags and started browsing through Puppy's inventory. After all, you went through my stuff. I don't see why I shouldn't return the favor. Let's see what we have here. A broken toy, a colored glass, light bulb, bottle caps. The other half of my glasses. <laughs> Squelch. Squelch? The unicorn pulled out his hoof from the bag, only to see it covered in sticky green goo. For Luna's sake. What is this stench? Scold put on a glove and carefully took out whatever it was that had produced all the slime. A uh, dead parador. Why would a foal want to keep a dead, rotting parador in her bag? Wait. A dead parador cub for a dead little undead foal? It's... is this her pet? All right, this ruined my day. The scribe put the dead critter back inside the bag and went to check the other. It was almost empty. Why? Had she put all of her stuff in one bag and left the other empty? Go figure. After a quick check of the second saddlebags, Scold found what he was looking for in the form of a target designator. Uttering a short whistle, the scribe took it in his hooves and started the model. Ah, and here we have a winner! Solaris, and that makes so much sense. The old unicorn snickered, reading the weapon's data on the pip buck. Sentenza means judgment. <laughs> How appropriate. Looking in the distance, more or less in the same direction the foals turned, Scold sat behind her and continued. I am in your debt, my little soul. If that attack wasn't interrupted, many young ponies would have died. With those lights in the sky derailing the battle, you saved lives on both sides. The scribe patted Puppy Smiles on her helmet. This battle is ridiculous. Brothers fighting brothers, elders that care more for their own power than the good of those that surround them. Once I was told that a chief that deserves respect is a chief that gives respect to his subordinates. Our elder was... different and stubborn. He would have let all of his followers die simply to defend his beliefs, not even caring if they shared those beliefs or not. Patting the foal again, this time on her back, Scold sighed. I guess that I'll keep this little secret for myself. And Sentenza. And I'll forgive you for destroying, like, everything that I possessed and cared for. He paused, a slight smile on his lips. Except for the most valuable thing I ever had, my students. The unicorn sighed again. His body told him that he was old and tired, but somehow he was also a happy pony. The old stallion didn't remember the last time he felt like this. It must have been a very long time ago. Oh well, the Big 52 gives and the Big 52 takes. And I'll give you something in return for your toy. Here. Let be her friend and don't dye her mane. Deal? Scold put the Lyra doll inside Puppy Smile's bags. Look at you. I wish I had a grandchild. But my son... No, I'd better not talk about that. The unicorn stood and trotted away, leaving Puppy to sit by herself on the hillside. Oh, and one last thing. 
is a town called Broccoli south of here. But before getting the name from what they farm, the town was called Rainy Camp. It is Assembly Hall and is still named Rainy Days. I'm not sure if it'll help you, but I don't believe in luck. So, you should go and check for yourself. With these last words, the pony disappeared behind the hillside. Journal updated. New primary quest. Southern Storm. Broccoli Town Hall set his new primary objective. Broccoli Town Hall marked on the compass. A pink arrow appeared and began to blink. Day 12. Time approximately 5 a.m. Location Steel Ranger Outpost, Big 52, SC Branch. Cold shower greeted Henrietta with a nod as the griffin entered the bunker. I hope my summon wasn't too hasty, but I could have a solution for both your payment and a trouble of mine. Henrietta took her time to look inside the room before replying to the paladin's words. The bunker, Central Hall, consisted of a large room with a low ceiling supported by a forest of pillars. There were shelves lined up against the walls and low metallic tables in the middle of the room. But instead of chairs for ponies, the, they used metal boxes that doubled as small cabinets. Henry noticed that there were no couches in this room, but there was a stair going up, probably to the observation post, and a couple of metal doors closed with some sort of computerized lock. In the room, there were seven ponies. Two of them wore the typical power armor of the rangers, but without their helmets, Henry was easily able to recognize them as Paladin Shower and Paladin Goss. The other five ponies were all new faces for the griffin. They were in chains and wanted varying degrees of shame. Fear or anger on their faces. Just looking at those muzzles gave the griffin aware of whatever the paladin was going to offer couldn't be good news. I want double. Cold Shower ignored her and continued to speak as soon as she was sure of having the mercenary's attention. These are steel rangers still faithful to their elders. They decided to capitalize instead of fighting, since the base was irredeemably lost. But they won't join our ranks. They need an escort to Tunnel Town, across the desert, so a good hired gun that doubles as air recon would be perfect. Henrietta cocked her head. What am I, a full sitter? I have my agenda, and you owe me a load of caps. Yes, I know. And this is where I'm offering you a helping hoof. We will keep Puppy Smiles with us. Hopefully, finding a way to make her talk again, I'm quite sure that you haven't the slightest idea of how to help her. Maybe we can do something about that. Oh, and I'll give you good weapons and special ammo. Plus your caps. So you're still declining? Getting help for Puppy and a bunch of new equipment, just to make sure these five silly ponies made it to cross the Serpent Desert? That was too good to be true. Where's the catch? The paladin frowned. I'm not trying to trick you. I need you to make a clean job and do it fast. I'm sick of quarreling with every damned comma in this sentence. This is my first, last, and only offer. If you don't accept it, I'll just have to dispose of the prisoners by different means. At those words, a young mare gasped, taking a step back. But, but we're prisoners. You can't do that. We surrendered. One of the other ponies, an older mare with a long scar along her cheek, hit the panic pony with a hoof. Shut up, scribe. What did you expect? A cup of tea and some apologies for being too harsh? The other three prisoners simply lowered their eyes, saying nothing, but the young mare insisted. The scribe scold won't allow that. I'm his best student. I am... Blam. The room went quiet for a moment every pair of eyes staring at the still-smoking muzzle of Goss's pistol. The young scribe shivered without looking at the hole in the wall, nor at the hairs of her mane that slowly fell to the floor, next to a yellow stain that was rapidly spreading on her robe in the hindquarters. Shut up and qu wait, scribe. To her credit, the young mare tried not to scream, but simply sobbed in silence. The other prisoners seemed almost ashamed of her, more than afraid of what had just happened. The old mare with the scar looked directly at the scribe in contempt and anger. Goss turned to Henrietta, continuing the negotiation from where a cold shower was interrupted. 
We do what we have to, Griffin. Paladin Cold Shower and Scribe Scold decided to try a diplomatic approach in the matter. But not everypony's happy with that. So, what's your choice? The young mare was still sniffling. She muttered in a low voice, I don't want to die. Henry looked at Goss's eyes, then at the five prisoners, trying to ignore the stench of piss that was rapidly invading the room. Fuck. Every pony is a pretty fucking eggs. This is for puppy. Doing it for her. Hang on, Henry. All right. All right, you win. I'll escort them north. But if I come back and puppy isn't here, you've gained yourself an enemy. And I'm faster with than you with a gun, paladin robo-colt. So don't even think it can impress me with some cheap tricks like that. The paladin smiled back at the mercenary, nodding slowly at her remarks. He didn't seem very impressed. Now, I'm going to speak with that scold guy to be sure he won't do anything weird with my friend. You better get these five ponies ready before I'm back. The griffin walked out of the bunker as if she was the princess of the place. As soon as she was out, Goss burst into a laugh. <laughs> what a crybaby. I can't believe it. And she dares call herself a mercenary. Close your trap, Goss. We need her. Nice bluff, anyway. Cold cut him short. I wasn't bluffing. Goss, sometimes you scare me. Day 12. Time approximately 5.30 a.m. Location. Steel Rangers Outpost. Big 52, SC Branch. What do you mean she's gone? She was with that red pony, Scold. She can't have gone far. Where's the scribe? Henrietta was freaking out completely. She hadn't even spent half an hour talking with the rangers, and Puppy had already disappeared. I... I can't believe it. This is a joke, right? She's gonna jump from behind a corner and yell surprise, and I'll look like a fool, right? The young acolyte was backpedaling as the griffin stalked towards him. I... I don't know. Scribe Scold went for a walk, and he's still not back? Yeah, but did he have the foal with him or not? I... I don't know. Wait, he's there. Go talk to him, please. I really, really, really have to go by. The young soldier galloped away while Henry tried to spot the old unicorn. Gould trotted into the camp after giving one last look at the horizon. May you find happiness one day, little pony. The red-caped pony turned his head to look at the camp, but instead he found himself once again facing that griffin brat. Oh, you're back already. Yeah, yeah, where's puppy? Snapped the mercenary. Don't worry, she's making taken care of. Did you accept Shower's offer? Henry nodded, still quite upset. Sure, but I want to see puppy before we're going. The scribe smiled and looked the griffin in the eyes. There's no need to check on the fool. She'll be fine. Trust me on this one. And help those five ponies. They need you more than puppy at this moment. Those eyes. So charming. Yes, puppy had to be safe. Especially if the scribe was saying so. Right? I... I forgot what I was about to say. Probably nothing important. Look, there's Paladin Goss. You better check if they're ready to leave. The scribe smiled again. A simple trick for a simple mind. And he wasn't even that proud of his stare. Goss came out from the bunker, followed by the five ponies, now free from the chains and escorted by a group of armed acolytes. Miss Brightfire! The group's ready! Miss Brightfire! The griffin moved towards the paladin, opened her beak to say something, but immediately paused to study the bunch of ex-prisoners. They aren't armed. How am I supposed to take them across Serpent Desert without a weapon? I don't know. Give them yours. Or make a stop at Rust Manor and buy some. Good luck, tough girl. The paladin now wore its helmet. But it was quite evident that he was enjoying this moment. Henrietta ignored his provocation and shrugged. 
I'm more than enough. You keep an eye on Puppy and everything will be all right. Goodbye, not Robocolt. Call me that again and I... Yeah, yeah, I know the story. I use it too. The Gryphon ignored the ranger's threats and waved to the five ponies. Group, let's move. This place smells. The mercenary walked out of the encampment heading north, followed by the others. Hello again, my little ponies. I have some hot off the presses news for you this morning. It's absolutely incredible. Easy Philly Butterfly 23 reported a light and magic show south of Rust Manor, in the direction of Ivory Tower. I don't have many details, but it does seem like someone attacked the place with some really big guns. Because that light show could be clearly seen from miles away. The whole fight seemed to have lasted no more than five minutes. Maybe a little longer. But it ended with the biggest explosion ever. Well, after the one we saw in Salt Cube City, anyhow. I don't know who attacked who or why. But the area surrounding Ivory Tower should be avoided if you don't have the urges and stuff business there. And now, worse news. A caravan was found raised by ironworks. The corpses of at least eight guards were lying dead around the, with a traitor and his family. The wild herd is going things seriously this time. Please be cautious and try to travel in groups. Avoid the area if at all possible. Now, some music for you ponies that have lost your way and can't go back home. May a lone star guide you, my little ponies. This is Pony Marcus, and it's for you. Day 12. Time approximately 9.30 a.m. Location. North of Broccoli. Big 52, SC Branch. The yellow filly zoomed along the Big 52 on her red racer, following the pink arrow blinking on the compass. I knew Mom was okay. I mean, uh, I was just a bit, uh, tired. Yeah, I was tired. Not worried. And that creepy voice didn't stop chatting all the time. With all her blah blah blah. I mean, who needs wings anyway? Puppy chats never seemed to come to an end. She jumped from one topic to another in a manner that only a mindless machine could actually stand. Do you know what's scary? I was in that place with a silver rain, and then I woke up in a whole different place. Maybe I sleepwalked. Hey, Mr. Voice, are you listening? Affirmative. Vocal interface is active. Good. I wonder when Henry went again. She keeps disappearing. Oh well. I guess we'll see her in the next town, maybe? What was the town's name? Broccoli. Ew. I hate broccoli. Did I say that? Forty-eight times. Well, yeah, because I really hate them. I hope Mom isn't there buying broccoli, because I didn't scoot all this road just to have broccoli pie for lunch. In the distance, an old road sign stated that travelers were now leaving the central branch of the inter-equestrian Route 52 and entering its south branch. Some pony had written underneath it, Broccoli, 12 kilometers. Footnote. Level up. Specialized loyalty. Perk added. No, puppy. You're doing it wrong. Here, let me help. With this perk, you'll be capable of using explosives, lockpicking, Medicine, repair, science, and survival scores of a present ally, instead of yours in skill checks. In addition, the presence of certain allies during encounters will provide additional dialogue options.